We're going to talk a little bit about how to bait your cage trap. One of the challenges with baiting a cage trap is that you want to be sure that you bait it in a manner so that it's attractive to the animal that you're trying to catch, but also in a manner so that it forces the animal to come over the treadle to trigger the trap. Now there's a debate in the industry as to whether or not you trail the animal in. For example, some people like to put bait out here and then trail the animal in to, to, the, to the, the big prize. Other people say, no, you should only have bait in the back. I'm a fan of, the per, of putting the bait in the back. The reason is because if the animal doesn't like the bait out here, then he won't continue the journey. I want to make the animal, if you want to play, you're going to have to pay. So that's but my opinion. But one of the things you do when you're trying to set your, set your uh, set your trap and place your bait is you want to be sure that the trap, uh, that the bait is not so close to the, to the walls so that an animal is going to reach in and grab it. A lot of people don't realize animals don't just simply go to the door first. They go to the bait first and they're going to be trying to reach in and grabbing your bait. If you put your bait on the ground, especially during the summertime, you may find that it's getting eaten by ants. The other challenge with bait on the ground is it's not getting enough airflow because you want to have that odor to be an attractive pull to the animal to come to. Now you should always be placing your traps in a proper location. Location, location, location is absolutely cr critical. Never make a bait do what your trap location should do for you. However, that being said, once the trap is in the proper location, you always want to make sure that the bait is positioned properly to be attractive to the animal that you're trying to catch. Well, one of the things that we've that that's been created by a friend of mine back east is he would create these little trigger these little bait holders made out of um, annealed wire. This is called trapper's wire. It's probably uh, 14 gauge, uh, maybe 16 gauge. You basically you just basically put a hook on it, and then you kind of sort of create a little curly Q web at the bottom. And then you can sort of dip this into your paste bait, typically like a peanut butter bait, or there's a lot of professional baits out there that are made out of paste baits. And so it's just basically a little clump up there. So now it has 360 degree exposure to the air. And that's something that you want to have an advantage. Plus, it's not on the ground, so it's less attractive to ants, which also gives you a little bit more. And then you just simply hang it on the wire cage like that. So now it's basically at eye level and it's available for your animal. Now another, another option for you is taking a Y stick that has uh, the other end. And so you just basically dip the, the end into your paste bait and then drop it through. And then the Y would get hung up on the wire cage itself. And again, that keeps it off the ground, off the area where ants are going to get at it and consume your bait and makes it perfectly available for the animal that you're going to be controlling. What I like about the wire is that it allows you to cover your trap. I don't recommend anyone setting a cage trap unless they cover it at least 50% of the length. And the reason for that is, is twofold. One of them is that in case you catch a skunk, people contact me and they're always surprised. They said, I set a trap for a squirrel or I set a trap for a ground squirrel and I caught a skunk. And for some reason they think that there's like a sign in the front of it that says skunks are not allowed. But the fact of the matter is, is that once you have that door open, and this is plenty big enough for a skunk, uh, it, skunks are omnivores and they'll come in and check it out. And all, they're not afraid of things and they'll just walk right in and all of a sudden you get catch a skunk. Well, if you don't have the trap covered, you've got a little bit of a problem. Now you've got to be taught how to approach the trap and cover it so you don't get sprayed. But if you already have it covered in advance, then you can come and just cover the rest of it as needed and then dispose of the, and then dispose of the skunk appropriately. Now it's not relocation. You'd want to be able to euthanize, you'd want to euthanize a skunk or simply let it go on your property. But by having it, the other reason why you want half of the trap covered is for humane reasons. You see, this trap, contrary to popular opinion, is not a humane trap by itself. 
An animal that's caught in here is going to be exposed to the elements, to rain, to wind, to sun, depending on the temperature of the atmosphere at that particular time. What time of year are you trapping? There's also a psychological stress involved here. An animal that's caught in a cage, particularly a small animal, is going to be fearful of all the predators that are going to be flying around or coming to. Animals have died in these cages because other animals have come along and attacked them in that. This provides that animal a place of shelter away from that. So now they have a place to get out of the wind, out of the rain, and have a place where they can feel they can hide without feeling so exposed. So it's also a humane issue involved here. And then lastly, I find that having this type of a cover reduces human stress because when sometimes neighbors are very stressed when you're trapping on someone else's property or even trapping on your own property. And this allows the animal to be out of public view so that your neighbors aren't complaining about the fact that you've been trapping an animal. Hope that's going to be helpful to you as you're going to be using some cage traps. Cover your traps and try that bait technique for yourself.